Guys, what's going on? It's been a while. This is Real Talk with Matt Malak. We've got a special guest on the line tonight. Uh, he's actually a cousin of mine. You know, we're cousins. Um, we live in different areas, though. Bob Malacky, little Bobby. What's up, Bob? It's going good. How you doing? It's good, man. I mean, it's. It, I'm sure it's going a hell of a lot better where you're at right now. Uh, you just got some big news, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, pretty exciting day for the family over here, and uh, just happy to make everybody over here proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you want to share, I mean, it's your glory, so I don't want to share for you. You know, I mean, you know, what's what was the big news? Oh, well, uh, yesterday I found out that the Washington Nationals decided to uh, draft me, and uh, I will now become a part of that organization and continue my baseball career. That's incredible, man. See, you know, I mean, you know, growing up, I always knew about your dad and, you know, I had his cards when he was with Baltimore and um, that is so remarkable how you literally, you know, like followed in his footsteps. Yeah, well, uh, he definitely uh, led the way for me. Uh, He basically fed me baseball my whole life. So uh, eventually I just got the same love for the game that he had and uh, I picked it up from there and I just kept working and all I wanted to do was baseball, learn baseball, watch baseball, play baseball. So once that happened, I uh, just progressively got better and better and better. And now uh, I'm almost to the same stage that he got to. And I hope uh, I keep, I'm obviously going to keep working uh, as hard as I can. So I can get to that glory. Uh, I've I've lived the life being known as uh, Bob Malacky's son. So uh, my, my goal is to hopefully, uh, by the end of this, my dad be known as uh, Bob Malacky Jr.'s father. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, man. That is really cool. Wow. Oh, wow. That's incredible. So, you know, I got to ask, having this news thrown onto you, what's the ultimate feeling like? I'm sure it's unexplainable. Oh, yeah. It, it was uh, It was breathtaking. I was actually in shock. I was just sitting there and when I heard my name get called, I wasn't expecting it. So immediately, I, I didn't really have a reaction. I actually like looked back at the computer and made sure it really said my name. I wasn't envisioning <laughs> it. So it was a definitely unexplainable moment. That's crazy. That is insane. Looking back to make sure they said your name. Come on, you know Malaki's not a common last name. <laughs> but you know they yeah. sometimes people know how to screw it up with somebody with the you know the name Maleki or something like that. The pronunciation. It was, it was actually incredible. They said it perfectly the, the right way the first time. I was I was in shock. But uh, yeah, that was actually one thing that I I joked about uh, with my friends because. Uh, when they announce the name, they say uh, they say the last name first. So I was like, "Well, there's not going to be another Malaki. So at least it's, at least my name's not Smith. So every time a Smith gets drafted, I'd be like, "Oh, that's me." Nope, nope. <laughs> that's too funny, man. Oh my god. So you were watching this on your laptop, you had said, right? Yeah, yeah. I was watching on my laptop. Uh, I, I had a bunch of friends get drafted the first, uh, actually, all three days. So. I watched the whole draft in entirety, and uh, man, I probably consumed about, I'd say, 15 hours of my day. Yesterday alone, uh, the draft started at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, and my name didn't get called until 3 o'clock, so that gives you an idea how long long the days were. So, you know, I mean, you saying that, though, name not getting called until around 3 o'clock, what was the emotions going through your body earlier on? Yeah, uh, I was definitely, uh, I was definitely nervous. I, my thought was, I really, I really, really wanted to uh, get called earlier so that the nerves would go away because uh, I'm, I'm a big nervous sweater. So <laughs> it's, it's about 115 degrees out here as it is, <laughs> and just adding the nervous sweats to it, I was just soaked, <laughs> just waiting for my name to get called and. Uh, I thought I actually caught a break around 11 o'clock. I got a phone call from a team, and they're like, hey, would you uh, take this amount of money? And I was like, oh, absolutely, in a heartbeat. And they're like, all right, cool. And then uh, the Washington Nationals called 10 minutes later, and they're like, yeah, will you take this amount of money? And I was like, well, another team just called, and their price is a little higher. If you want, if you guys can like bump up your price, then absolutely, I'll take it. So they called me, they called me back saying, uh, yeah, we're unable to give you that extra money, but 
please let us know if something falls through because that happens sometimes. Some teams can't keep promises, and sure enough, they were right. And uh, two hours went by. It was, I got ghosted by that team, didn't hear anything from them, so I got nervous, and draft's almost done. And I'm thinking in my head, like, I got to do something. I got to react. So I, I called that team, asked them what's going on. They're like, yeah, we uh, we don't have that money anymore. We decided to move on. We picked a different guy. Um, sorry you had to find out like this. And that was the end of the conversation with them. I was upset because they didn't tell me earlier. So I could have probably went higher in the draft and saved myself some anxiety. But then I uh, called the Nationals back like they told me to and told them, and they're like, well, it'd probably be the same offer. I was like, yeah, at this point, I'll take anything. Like, I just want a chance. And then they called me back and said, hey, we don't know what happened, but uh, we feel really bad for you that all the money that we had, too, is gone. I, I wish whatever that team did to you, I wish that never happened to you. That's a nightmare. So in my head, I was uh, pretty upset. So I turned my laptop off, put my phone down, went to go take a nap, and uh Ten minutes later, I get another call from the Nationals saying they found the money. And uh, they ended up finding a way to work it out. So I could have saved some three hours of anxiety if I knew uh, the one team wasn't going to come through but and told the Nationals to go right ahead right away. But it is what it is, and I lived a roller coaster day. I remember texting my buddy early that morning when he texted me, good luck today. I texted him, I, I have a feeling it's going to be a roller coaster of emotions, and that's exactly what it was. I went... I was bummed for the first couple hours. My name wasn't called. And then 11 o'clock comes around. My, uh, I got really excited. I was telling my mom. She was here on her lunch break. I was telling her. I was like, I'm going to get drafted. This is awesome. And we're all watching. We thought my name was going to get called. It just never got called. She left. And then just my excitement went down more. And then it hit a rock bottom. I got really upset. Turned everything off. And then once again, it spiked back up. And I got drafted. And it ended on a happy note. That is so incredible, dude. And you know, are and were you nervous at all that they were going to be like, "Oh, yeah, I'm sorry that that other team did that to you. We found another guy." Did, was that running through your head? Were you worried? Yeah. Well, I've I've heard horror stories like that before, and I even had uh, I had a bunch of interest going into the draft, and one team even told me, "Hey, uh, if we call you uh, and tell you you're about to get drafted, don't." don't get too excited right i mean get be excited but don't get your hopes up because when i tell you that we're about to draft you we're also in our head thinking hey we're gonna draft five guys and obviously you're watching the other teams and if uh they they had those five guys listed in order which one they want to take first which one they want to take last and uh one of the teams must have missed out on a guy that uh, the other team, the team that called me wanted, and they wanted him more than me, so I, they went ahead and went with that guy instead. So you're telling me that they might, you know, teams might actually call you and say, we might be calling you, but don't get your hopes up because we might not be calling you. Yeah, that's basically it. They they, they tell you, uh, hey, your your name might be coming up right now. Just be ready, be ready to listen for it, but don't get your hopes up because – your main, your name might not come up, but <laughs> that is crazy. Oh my god! Yeah, definitely, definitely a bunch of emotions going through your head when that happens. Oh my god, dude, that is insane. So, I mean, the build up had to just be like you had said, you know, a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, I, I bet I probably would have been a little more excited if I got drafted at the time I was told I was getting drafted. <laughs> I. I didn't really have a reaction when I got drafted. I, it was more like a sigh of relief, like, wow, thank God I finally got drafted. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't fist pumping or anything. I was just I just kinda sat there and was like, Whew, I can finally relax now. I'm exhausted. I got a headache. <laughs> I need to lay down. <laughs> hey, well, this is a little bit of a taste of the New Jersey Malakis. We'll talk privately. Whatever that team was, I will never root for them again in my life. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. I, I, I told my family I hate them. Never again going to even look at them. I, I was uh, Obviously, most people hate the Yankees and grew up hating the Yankees. Well, now I got a new least favorite team. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, I mean, look at it now. You're going to be playing pitcher, aren't you? You're going to be looking at these teams from the mound. Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I've already, I've already uh, thought about that. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, 
I actually had a little uh, taste of that medicine uh, last year when I was at Grand Canyon University. We uh, opened our season up against the the Arizona Diamondbacks. I so remember seeing that, Bob. Yeah. I, I actually got to pitch against real big league guys, which was a really cool moment. I uh, I faced some guys that are currently big leaguers, and I gave up a hit to one guy. And I remember when I'm on the mound, my focus is only on the catcher. So I don't really think about the hitter. I don't look at the hitter. I don't even th- know who's hitting sometimes. I just know it's right-handed or left-handed or what I'm going to do to him. But uh, the time when it really kicked in that I was pitching against my – my favorite team of all time and guys that I look up to and watch every day on TV is when I gave up a hit to a guy and he got to second base and I, uh, I have to hold him on. So I, uh, take, I get in my set position. I look back at second base to hold him on. So he doesn't steal on me. I look right into his eyes. I'm like, wow, that's, <laughs> that's Nick Ahmed over there. That's the shortstop for the Diamondbacks. <laughs> that wow. guy's looking at me. <laughs> huh. So I, I had to take a step off the mountain, uh, adjust and get the anxiety out of my body after doing that and had to think all right it's just a game you've you've done this your whole life get back to it now i isn't it doesn't the nationals take pride on kind of breeding a pitcher almost oh yeah they, they've done a great job in uh getting uh developing starting pitchers in the past even some relief pitchers like uh steven strasburg he was he was a case where they didn't really have much to develop. He was God gifted right away. The guy came in throwing a hundred miles an hour with an unbelievable curveball. So he was a first uh, first overall pick, and he was destined to be really good. But they've also developed some other really strong arms that have been all stars throughout their system. Now, what are you doing in prep as of right now? Because I'm assuming you're going to be leaving soon for the training camp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, I already had an idea that this was going to happen. I had a feeling. I, I had a lot, like I said, I had a lot of interest going into the draft. So I knew I had to prepare myself because when you get drafted, you report right away. Like I leave on, I leave Sunday and I go straight into the thick of things and they expect me to be ready. So um, I had my season uh, at Arizona Christian this year finished it off, went, had a strong year. Um, I went through finals. Uh, we Our season ended before finals week, so I went through finals week, and I decided to give myself a, a breather on my arm. My arm needed it. It was a little tired. So uh, I took 10 days off, and at, after those 10 days, I actually flew out to go visit my dad. He's with the Carolina Mudcats, which is a high A level for the Milwaukee Brewers. Okay. So I, I went out there, and uh, – as soon as I got there, that's when I started throwing again. Uh, I actually got a call from another team, and they wanted me to throw a bullpen for them. So I had to go drive an hour to their uh, minor league facility and throw on their game mound, which was kind of a cool experience. But, uh, yeah, so I, I basically worked out with my dad's team and prepared myself so I'd be in a good position to be ready to go right away. Now, what is throwing bullpen? So, uh Basically, you it's just a uh, obviously you got to practice pitching on the mound, so you're ready in the game. So throwing a bullpen, you're just going out there, getting on the mound, and uh, working with all your pitches. Working on uh, you work on different things each time you go out there. Some things uh, that maybe you're lacking. So maybe uh, you're working on location that day, being more consistent, throwing strikes with a certain pitch maybe you want to work on uh burying a slider so if you're in a two strike count you want to strike a guy out you don't want to throw a uh, breaking ball right down the middle because they'll be sitting breaking ball and if it's right down the middle they're going to whack it somewhere as a professional hitter so you got to be able to bury that pitch and make it seem as if it's going to be a strike and it drops out of the zone and it gets in the dirt so they have no chance of touching it so uh, uh yeah basically just working on your pitches, working on location, keeping a consistent tempo, and uh, getting a good mindset. That way you're not in a panic when you get on the mound. Now, growing up, not to go more towards a negative question, but just as like a motivational to people who are going to be listening to this, hopefully you know, some young kids, young guys are going to be listening to this who want to go you know, and now kind of follow you in your footsteps and everything you had done. 
did you grow up ever watching an older guy on whatever team it was? You know, I mean, a high school, middle school team where he was just the star guy. And, you know, he... People thought he was going and then he might not have and, and you never thought you were going to get on that level, but now you are on that level. Yeah, uh, I definitely looked up to a lot of guys and uh, I, I try to I try to develop my game to be similar to guys. I pick guys' brains. Like I didn't just go out to work out with my dad's team. I, I picked their brains, got some thoughts, wanted to listen to what they had to say about certain situations. Uh, just... They they have the, – obviously, they're older. They got more knowledge of the game than I do. I got a lot of knowledge for my age, but there's still things that anybody can learn. Even the, uh, Ben Scully, the longtime uh, broadcaster for the Dodgers, I'm sure there's things that he still needs to learn about baseball. Yeah. Like, there's no there's no way anybody personally knows the game exactly step by step. So, um, yeah, I, I uh, growing up, I remember – always mimicking hitter stances guys that i idolized my dad would always tell me hit like bobby malacky not like luis gonzalez or steve finley which were diamondbacks that i was really big fans of growing up he always used to tell me be yourself be, uh you can look up to these guys but don't be them because they they do what they do because that's how they do it <laughs> you that's gotta, a, you gotta that makes a lot of way. sense <laughs> No, that totally makes a lot of sense, man. You know, developing your own style or taking yeah. how you were saying pieces of what other guys do and then still formulating it into how you play the game. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you got to find a you got to find a happy medium. I mean, there's uh, one thing that I've learned as a baseball player is everything a coach tells you doesn't always work out for you. So what really helped me is when I when I learned how to actually be really good at baseball is when I combined it, everything that each coach has told me throughout the stuff that didn't work for me and used the stuff that I really liked. And I, I got to give a, a little tip of the cap to all those guys and a thank you because there's a lot of things that they taught me. And every single coach that I've had has some little mechanical thing or uh, mental thing in my head all the time. So every single one of them contributed in making the fi final masterpiece that I have created myself wow now now going to that camp are you at all kind of like getting some feels already like what's it going to be like when you're coming across some really big name players yeah um my dad kind of gave me a little heads up what, what what to expect with him being with the nationals last year he kind of has a good idea he knows all the people there so he kind of gave me a little heads up on who who to talk to who to meet um how guys react what they look for um some things that they are really stern about like th they really want me to do or some things that can get me in trouble if i don't do it so uh yeah there's a he gave me a little heads up and uh uh prepared me a little bit yeah forward. yeah wow that's wild, man. Oh, my God. That's got to be such an incredible, incredible feeling. Is it, it? I mean, it's – do you now – I mean, obviously, I'm sure you're just kind of like – you got this thought in your head, yes, it's there, but you're not going to stop grinding out. Oh, no, no. Uh, being drafted where I was drafted, I'm, I'm expected to uh, fail. They're, they're, I'm going in there, and they're, t they're thinking, this guy's – bottom of the uh bottom of the line he's not going to do anything so i didn't get a lot of money like some of the first rounders did they're getting millions and i'm i'm getting a low amount and uh so i got to go out there they're expecting those guys to be good they're expecting me to be bad i got to prove them wrong and you so, will absolutely that's that's the game plan i ha i have to keep that mindset it's not it's not just going to be handed to me i'm getting a jersey <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible dude oh my god i'm happy for you man this is surreal now you know i mean preparation wise or as a pitcher are they having you lift heavy amounts of weights or what's that like because i know it for each position in baseball i know that i know all sports you know it's always going to differ as far as workout plans but I know baseball is one of the, the sports where they really, really crack down on what they want you to be doing inside of the gym and out there, you know, during physical training. 
Yeah, so I've actually had a couple different um, approaches that I've heard, and I don't really know which one's right, honestly. Uh, I, I went from Grand Canyon, where they believed in being careful and uh, not overlifting, but lifting enough to where you're getting stronger and maintaining weight, to uh, Arizona Christian, where they believe that uh, uh, lifting hard and lifting heavy is the best way to gain velo and get better. Uh, and also keep your body healthy. So I've, I've seen both approaches. Uh, personally, the one that I uh, listen to the most is the one that my dad actually taught me. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen my dad in person, but he is very large. He is. And, well, uh, I was a young kid too, man, which made him even bigger. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, uh, he actually, his mindset was to um, lightweight with a lot of reps. So I, he always told me, Never go above a certain amount of weight, but uh, do as many reps as you can. And uh, you, you don't want to have uh, big muscles. You just want to be you want to be strong and have the endurance. If your muscles are too big, then you're going to lose flexibility and you're not going to be able to move out there on the field. You want to be able to move because you actually have. Believe it or not, you have to be flexible playing baseball. I, flexibility, I, I, that's believable. flexibility gains velocity. So, <laughs> so high repetition. And yes, I, I mean, are you now working more so because I'm trying to think like, you know, I mean, I only played baseball when I was a very young kid, man. And, you know, I followed it. Yeah, here and there. I came out to Pittsburgh. I'm in Pittsburgh now. And, you know, the Pirates, any Pittsburgh sport out here is like a holiday every time. Yeah. I play. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to get the feel of what exactly everything else is being focused. Are, are you working out more so your chest, your tricep? What, what exactly do they have you focusing on the muscle group wise? Well, um, personally, I think they, uh, they really focus on everything. But the main thing that they really want you to be good at in baseball no matter what position you're playing, is you, you need to have a strong core. So you got to you got to be able to do your abdominals and you got to do your core lifts and uh, keep the core strong because basically everything you do is off uh, core muscles. You got to have good balance and you can't have good balance unless you have a strong core. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things dealing with balance in baseball uh, when it comes to either hitting. You don't want to fall off balance. Pitching, you want to have a strong core. To, uh, when you lift your leg, you don't want to have gravity take you down to the, the 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 plate because you'll be eliminating your legs and you'd be using all arm and that can lead to injury and your velocity will be down. So you have to have a strong core to be able to stay up there and push off when your legs are ready to push off. So as far as everything tying in to how fast that ball is going to be moving or what pitch you're throwing, they base that even off of workout? Oh yeah, they you got. There's a lot of a lot of things based off workout, and uh, it's like it's broken down is, to a science. Yeah, a big thing is being healthy. They want you to be healthy out there, and uh, when you're working out and running all the time, you're going to have the endurance to be able to throw as long as you possibly can. And uh, yeah, so you you got to do all the extracurricular activities if you want to be a successful pitcher. It's not just about throwing the ball down the plate. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. So coming from Arizona now to, you know, Washington, what's the transition going to be like for that? You know, I mean, you're out there in the desert in the, you know, in the, in the West, man, you're coming back to the, uh, I guess what would be you know, rather relatively Southeast area. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's going to be a different change. I'm going to go from dry heat, or, which I actually prefer the dry heat. Uh, it's a lot easier to play in, but, uh, then I'm going to be going to the humid uh, southeast of Florida for uh, camp because uh, that's where the Washington Nationals have their camp. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a different uh, feeling. I've never been that far away from home. And when I am that far away from home, I'm usually with family. So I'm going to be out on my own. Nowhere's close to home. If I get in trouble, there's no one to call. <laughs> so it's just going to be all on, on my own. i got to figure it out. It's, I'm finally entering the real world. <laughs> You call me. I will shoot down to Florida. I've got to get. Sometimes <laughs> Pittsburgh gets pretty misty and rainy and snow randomly in April. I will come down and save you, dude. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Are you so? I mean, though, overall, you know, I mean, it's going to be one hell of an experience, I'm sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm very excited. It's going to be a, a once in a lifetime chance. Uh, if it if it doesn't work out the first time, then there isn't really a second chance. Uh, so you got to hit the ground running. You got to work hard right away. You got to find a way to impress people because that's soon as soon as you start lacking off, and the next thing you know, you're you're at home sitting on the couch watching the guys on the TV. Yeah, watching watching your teammates that grinded and were successful. I just watched Moneyball the other night, and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that won't happen to you, though, dude. I, I, I got this feeling. You know, I mean, I know you've wanted this now for a long, long time, and it's here. And that's that's just so incredible as how – you know, because that's a big thing I feel like is a lot of people feel like they really can't make their dream come true. And then, I mean, if you think about it, if you really put the effort in and you listen to what these, you know, motivational guys are talking about, you can make anything come true if you really, you know, bust your ass. Yeah, that's actually a funny statement you make because uh, I actually had a friend text me last night and she said, uh, I'm jealous of you because you're the only person from our first grade class that actually kept his uh his elementary school dream job and made it happen. And I was like, well, I had a goal and I kept it. I, I, I wasn't going to listen to that elementary school teacher telling me that I was being unrealistic. I was in my head. I was being as realistic as I can be. Yeah. Dude, that's like a big thing. Like, you know, I mean, you'll be getting interviewed one day and you're going to mention that. Oh yeah, absolutely. It, it's, uh, you live your whole life people telling you you can't do something and i feel like that that this this, uh society that we live in people actually believe those people and i i really think that they're wrong and if you actually put in that hard work and you actually dedicate your life to actually doing something even if you face failure you're gonna find a way to get the job done like this this time last year this is actually a a real story and I'll, i'll be straight open with it this time last year I was. Uh, I remember I was in Kansas playing summer ball, and I called my dad, and I was, I was crying. And I was telling him, "Hey, man, I'm. I don't think I'm going to play baseball anymore. I just recently got cut from a Division One baseball team, and I didn't have a place to play anymore. And uh, they basically told me I, I wasn't good enough to play there, and I needed to find somewhere else to play. And I called my dad. I was like, "Hey, man, there's there's no hope. Like, I I don't want to waste my time. I'm close to graduating. I might as well just finish school and." Uh, it, it was a fun ride the 20 years. I put in a lot of work, but it didn't work out. And he, I remember him telling me he's really proud of me and uh, uh, everything that I accomplished, no matter what happens, whatever I decide, that he uh, he's really happy for everything that I've done. And uh, that kind of pushed me, and I just thought to myself, like, I can't give up now. Like, I, I, I'd be letting him down. So I, I got a couple phone calls down, and I – uh, got I figured it out and I went to Arizona Christian and I figured out everything I needed to do. I worked worked really hard during the summer ball, figuring out how to throw up because uh, I I always had a strong arm. I always thrown hard my life, but I didn't have anything else. And you can't live off fastballs when you're playing at the higher levels. Guys can hit fastballs no matter how hard you're throwing it. So I really had to work on how to develop an, a pitch that sets my fastball off. So they, that they're not just sitting fastball every time and keeps players off balance. So I, I really had to work hard, and I'm, I'm happy that Arizona Christian gave me the opportunity to play at their school, and I, I just never gave up. I knew that I was the odds were against me, and I had to find a way to make it happen. So uh, I worked hard, and I got it done, and here I am now a professional baseball player, which is crazy. That is incredible, man. That is incredible. Shit, I want you to get up here to Pittsburgh. Hopefully they got in the schedule to play the Pirates. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, there's, a, there's a chance that I'll be playing a rookie ball in the New York Penn League, and they, the teams are in Pennsylvania and New York. So uh, you could be seeing me in a couple of weeks. Who knows? Yeah, man, that would be so cool. Wow, that's incredible. And, you know, I mean, just to re, you know, re, retelling everything you just said about making your dreams really come true and not giving up. You know, you didn't give up, man. You really, you, you put the foot forward and finish the job. And look at look at you here now. You got the job for the Washington yeah, it, Nationals. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, it was definitely a uh, three sixty in the last year that I've uh, I dealt dealt with emotions. So 
uh, I'm, I'm thankful that I kept to it and uh, I get to fulfill the dream and try to make the most of it now. Now, did you find yourself at all like getting a pump up ever like, uh, you know, watching like some of the old baseball movies or something like that? You know, the Hollywood stuff, you know, I mean, I'm a big dramatizer when it comes to that stuff. I like to get the feel going and then, you know, I'll, I'll get in the zone. But, you know, it, you got one movie in particular where you know you're just going to throw on there before you go to camp? Um, actually, I, I don't really know one off the top of my head. Yeah, I guess <laughs> I don't, it's just I, me, then. There's, <laughs> there's, there's not really any uh, great pump-up baseball movies. I was actually thinking about that the other day. I, there's not really any baseball movies that I really like except Major, Major League, maybe. because I Dude, I love Major League. That's a, it's a funny movie, but... All the other ones are all just typical baseball movies. Like I'll sit down and watch them every once in a while, but I'm not really crazy about any baseball movies. Um, there's there's a couple other sport uh, movies that I like. Like I watched uh, Miracle for the first time a couple weeks ago. I can't believe it was the first time I watched it, but it was a great movie. But uh, no, there's there's definitely movies that get me going. Like Southpaw. That's that movie gets me going. I, I love that movie. Hey, well, if that's what it does for you, then perfect. I, I guess they would probably frown upon if you got in any physical stuff at camp, though. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, no. I, I can't be swinging at people at all. Oh, my God. That's incredible, man. Holy hell. That's really cool. Well, I just got to say, Bob, that's that's some huge, awesome news. And, you know, Malaki's back in. You know what I mean? Never yeah. left. I know your dad's still involved with, with baseball. And, you know, but but look at it now, you know. Little Bobby is back. He's he's in, man. He's on his game. Yep, it, it's it's time to bring the Malaki name back on the map. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's incredible. You know, I I feel like one day, who knows? Maybe I'll be up in the stands myself, and it'll be like the Sandlot where I'm giving you the thumbs up. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible, dude. Wow. Well, I just got to say, man, thank you so much for being on the show. That is so cool. We're going to have to do follow-ups, you know, because I'm going to want to hear all about the journey. And the story, your story already is so remarkable. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It was actually awesome. I really enjoyed this. Absolutely, brother. Well, hey, this let's not make this the last one. We got to keep these rolling for sure. Sounds good to me. All right, boss. Thanks, Bobby. No problem. All righty.
Homemade 